And what that does for us as teachers is gives us a chance to individually meet meet Mm -hmm. in with each person, get to to know who they are as a reader, and set some basic assessment. I started here before we had PLCs, and when I reflect, it, it was me planning by myself in my classroom. I did the best I could. Then as we started to work towards the PLCs, You know, just thinking through things together, talking about things together, talking about kids together. Working together as a team has pushed me to want to do better. They held held me accountable. You know, meeting standard to exceeding. And remind me again with this unit what your your power standard was, what were you focusing on? Okay, so this is state. It has become the most fundamental part of of my teaching because it's that piece where I can not only share with my colleagues, but I can get some feedback as well. And then we can pull in other resources and decide, you know, what might be best practice for us. And you don't want, you don't function in a vacuum anymore. So it's been great to start out Monday morning, actually every week, with um, focusing on what's important and focusing on our kids and their music education, as it kind of gets me back on track each week. It's not just your kids, it's it's a group, and you're working together as a team and focusing as a, as a group. And then and then, like I said, the kids buy into it too, So, and the parents buy into it. Um, it's very, it's helped focus the goals of me, my students, and my fellow teachers, and change the conversations that we have around the school. We used to hire a single teacher to teach a single classroom of kids. Now we hire teachers that are part of a team, that, and they're responsible for all the third graders, or all the physical science students, or all the biology students at White River High School. That has probably been the most significant change in thinking. You can walk around to any of the buildings, Wilkeson included, and you will hear people talking more about, wow, you know, we got that data back. It's looking really, really good in this area, but I have this little group of kids I'm not sure what to do about. Do you have any suggestions? I know that you were really successful with your, your kids in that area. And you'll also hear kids talking that way. You'll hear kids saying, yay, I met my target as Influency, or, or, man, I can't believe it. i got to practice my tens more. One kid said to one of my, one of my students, um, what are you making for Mother's Day? And she goes, I'm not making anything for Mother's Day. I'm working on passing the MSP and meeting my goals. That didn't come from me. That was my kids talking, their goal focus. So I think with the PLCs, knowing the goals and the kids knowing their goals and being very focused on them, and they're proud of those goals and meeting them. Well, every time me and Mrs. Keating had lunch, I would bring a test or something that I got a really good grade on. And every time there was a test, and I got almost 100% on all of them. And I was pretty proud, and so was Mrs. Keating. In what areas do you see our students doing well based on the data? The layers of accountability in this process have changed. We start our work at the district office, we work with our principal teams, our principals go into the buildings and work with their leadership teams. So when the teams at the table are doing the work, they're absolutely clear on the expectations. And then we check on the products that these teams generate, we check on the uh, assessment data, and we ask that question, are more kids learning more? Often what we do with the PLC is we'll go through and look at the data. And we look uh, student by student, item by item. And we look at where kids have really done well and areas where there may have been issues. We don't just do that in a PLC. We also take that back to the kids themselves. If you show the kids a grid with data on it, they know what the green means, they know what the red means, they know what the yellow means, and they also look at their own assessments and they're able to see where they met targets and where they didn't meet targets and set goals for themselves. The kids can go from one building to another building if they move and you know they're going to get the same thing, you know they're going to get the same um, teaching, you know know they're going to get the same assessments, you know they're going to be graded the same way um, because of the work that we do um, across the district as a team. Daily, when teachers are checking on, you know, doing those quick checks for understanding, just like good teachers do, they're, they're responding immediately. It's affecting the instruction the next day. We look at the assessment and we think, well, and if one of us has done, our, our data looks a little better, we can look at, well, what did you do? Did you tweak a lab or did you do a different activity or did you use a different resource? Um, and then, because we've built this reteaching scaffolding back piece, 
you can then take it right from PLC. It's not something you have to wait until next year. You can take it back and you can use it in a day or two. And then in terms of how we deliver the curriculum, it's just way more intentional. It isn't, okay, we're on page three this week. Are you on page three yet? Um, it's more like, wow, this is what we did, and the kids showed that they met the learning target. Um, were, is there something that you did differently? And the, and the conversations are more about the skills themselves and getting those kids to standard. If they're struggling on a test, they can retake a test. They, uh, they have a form they fill out that, that shows the extra work they've done. Uh, that, that kind of guides their questions so they can come to me with specific questions rather than just, I don't get it. You know, you're like, okay. Um, and so it really focuses those questions where instead of I don't get it, you're going to get more of a, uh, hey, I don't understand Newton's second law. I know how to find force, but how do I apply that to, to then solve for acceleration? Well, that's a question you can really focus down and, and, and help them out with right off the bat there. I know that I avoided a lot of pitfalls just listening to my colleagues talk about some things that have happened and asking a ton of questions and actually um, them even sometimes answering questions before I had them, that they were really helpful to know what pitfalls might be coming. It's totally a 180 degree shift from when I first started teaching and I would never want to go back to what, what it was before. I just won't want to have it any other way.